Paul Tudor Jones, the interest rates trading king. In the world of investing, few names shine as bright as Paul Tudor Jones. He's got a knack for making money, a talent for turning challenges into triumphs. Today, we're diving into his story, exploring how he became a pro at the money game. Join us as we unravel the tale of Paul Tudor Jones, the king of trading interest rates, a little from the background. Paul Tudor Jones II, the man who would become a financial giant, started his journey in Memphis, Tennessee. His father, John Paul Jack Jones, made a living practicing transportation law right next to the Daily News, a newspaper his family proudly owned for generations. Jack, in fact, served as its publisher for an impressive 34 years. The family's connection with the Daily News stretched back to 1886. It's worth noting that Paul Tudor Jones II has a half-brother named Peter Shutt. Early Education Paul's educational journey kicked off at the All Boys Presbyterian Day School before moving on to Memphis University School for high school. Even in those early days, there were signs of his resilience and determination. He then continued his education at the University of Virginia, where he not only excelled in academics, but also showed his prowess as a welterweight boxing champion. Life at the University of Virginia wasn't just about academics for Paul Tudor Jones, too. He took on leadership as the president of the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity. But like many, the road to education wasn't without its financial challenges. To support his studies, Jones contributed to the family's newspaper, writing under the pseudonym Paul Eagle. In 1976, he proudly earned his bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Virginia. Despite being accepted to Harvard Business School in the 1980s, Jones chose a different path and did not attend. These formative years laid the groundwork for the man who would, latter, revolutionize the world of financi, proving that success often finds those who navigated challenges with resilience and dedication. The Early Success In the early 1980s, Paul embarked on a significant journey by founding his own company, the Tudor Investment Corporation. Positioned in Greenwich, Connecticut, this organization has since become a prominent name in the landscape of asset management companies. With a comprehensive portfolio, Tudor Investment Corporation has its fingers in the pie of active trading, investing, and research across global equity, venture capitalism, currency, debt, and commodities markets. However, it was in the wake of the notorious Black Monday in 1987 that Paul Tudor Jones truly came into the limelight. In a feat that would solidify his reputation as a market sage, he accurately predicted the unfolding events, steering his investments through the storm and reaping substantial profits. This success wasn't merely a stroke of luck, but a proof of Jones' astute understanding of market dynamics. Joined by his colleague and friend Hunt Taylor, Jones continued to make waves in the financial realm. The duo played a pivotal role in the creation of Finex, a significant player in the financial futures sector of the New York Board of Trade. Not content with resting on their laurels, they were instrumental in the development of U.S. dollar index futures contracts, showcasing an entrepreneurial spirit that aimed not just at personal gain, but at contributing to the evolution of financial markets. Another major hit, playing a crucial role as the second-in-command to Paul Tudor Jones II at Tudor Investment Corporation, Peter Borish showcased remarkable foresight in 1987. Before the infamous crash, Borish took a unique approach by mapping the market conditions of 1987 against those that preceded the 1929 crash. This insightful analysis proved to be instrumental in anticipating the impending market downturn. As the 1990s unfolded, Tudor Investment Corporation, under Jones's leadership, aimed for greater liquidity and flexibility. Jones, along with his colleague Hunt Taylor, played a pivotal role in the creation of Finex, the financial futures division of the New York Board of Trade. 
This move not only bolstered Tudor's position in the market, but also contributed to the evolution of financial instruments, such as the U.S. dollar index futures contract. The early 1990s saw Tudor making strategic moves that further solidified his reputation as a market guru. In 1990, during the bursting of the Japanese equities bubble, Jones achieved an impressive 87.4% return by skillfully navigating and profiting from short positions in the market. This success highlighted not only his ability to foresee market trends, but also his knack for turning challenges into opportunities. In 1991, recognizing the changing dynamics of the financial landscape, Jones made a strategic decision. He closed the Tudor Select Fund, a futures fund, and returned investor capital. This move reflected Jones's commitment to adaptability and his willingness to make decisive choices in response to market shifts. These events in the 1990s not only demonstrated Paul Tudor Jones II's ability to read the market with finesse, but also underscored his commitment to strategic decision-making. Entry into 21st Century In 1994, Tudor Investment Corporation found itself in the regulatory spotlight. Facing allegations of violating the uptick rule, a provision within the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 aimed at curbing certain trading practices, Tudor settled with the SEC by paying a fine of $800,000. This settlement, the second highest at the time, was made without an admission of wrongdoing, but marked a significant moment in Tudor's journey emphasizing the importance of adhering to regulatory guidelines in the financial landscape. As the 2000s unfolded, Tudor faced a shifting landscape. A 2014 New York Times report noted a dimming of returns for Tudor clients over the decade. This change was attributed to Paul Tudor Jones II's deliberate shift toward more conservative trading strategies. Factors such as central banks maintaining short-term rates near zero and increased competition in the expanding hedge fund universe contributed to this adjustment in Tudor's approach. Despite challenges, Jones continued to navigate the complexities of the financial world. Strategic Investments, Castleton Commodities International. In 2012, Paul Tudor Jones II, alongside investors including Glenn Dubin and Timothy Barraquet, made a notable move in the world of investments. They joined a group acquiring Louis Dreyfus Highbridge Energy, a merchant energy operation from Louis Dreyfus Company and Highbridge Capital Management. This strategic move led to the creation of Castleton Commodities International, LLC. This investment underscored Jones's ability to identify opportunities and engage in ventures beyond traditional financial markets. Won't it be a shame talking about Paul Tudor and talking about his famous future trading strategy? For sure. So here is an extra chunk for all those who are a fan of his trading moves. The future trading strategy. Jones is known for his contrarian mindset. He sticks with a single trade until a new idea prompts him to reconsider. What's interesting is his approach to position management. He prefers to keep his exposure in the markets limited. When facing challenges in securing favorable trades, Jones opts for smaller amounts, showcasing his methodical and risk-conscious approach. Considered by many as a master in identifying and capitalizing on market opportunities, Jones has a distinctive method. When he conceives a promising idea, he cautiously implements it with a low-risk perspective. This disciplined approach continues until he acknowledges being proven wrong or until a fresh idea captures his attention. Paul identifies himself as a swing trader, emphasizing the potential for significant profits at various market turns. While he may not always catch every market movement, he has demonstrated a knack for capturing substantial portions of market tops and bottoms. What sets him apart is his calm demeanor, always relaxed, thinking coolly, and swiftly exiting losing positions to maintain composure. The adaptability in Jones's strategy 
shines through his habit of adjusting his trading mass based on market conditions. If a potential loss looms, he decreases his exposure, and as trades become successful, he ramps it up. Real-time monitoring of his entire portfolio equity is a key practice for Jones, who believes that prices lead the way and fundamentals should follow. Jones is a big-picture thinker, always keeping his gaze on the broader market landscape. He avoids dwelling on recent losses, emphasizing that a trader's ego should never dictate decisions. According to Joan, is questioning one's abilities and the constant desire for improvement are crucial. He warns against overconfidence, asserting that considering one a self superior to others in the trading game is a recipe for failure. A little about the controversial side. But like any other key figure of history, he has found himself entangled in controversies that shed light on both his influence and, at times, questionable judgments. In June 2012, Jones emerged as a key figure in the controversial removal of University of Virginia President Teresa A. Sullivan. He publicly supported her resignation, citing concerns about the university's academic rankings, staff salaries, and other perceived issues. However, this move faced substantial backlash, prompting the University of Virginia Board of Visitors to unanimously reinstate Sullivan on June 26, 2012. The incident raised questions about Jones' involvement in university governance and the extent to which external figures should influence such decisions. In 2013, Paul Tudor Jones faced criticism following a closed-door investment roundtable at the University of Virginia. A Washington Post video captured Jones responding to a question about the lack of diversity on the panel. Jones later apologized, stating that his comments were specific to the demands of global macro trading, but acknowledging the insensitivity of his off-the-cuff remarks. The incident underscored the ongoing challenges of gender equality and representation in the financial industry. Paul Tudor Jones' association with film producer Harvey Weinstein added another layer of controversy. As Weinstein faced mounting allegations of sexual misconduct in 2017, Jones reportedly sent him an email offering encouragement and advising on reputation management. The email, which suggested that the scrutiny would eventually subside, drew scrutiny itself. In 2020, Weinstein was convicted and sentenced to 23 years for sexual assault. Jones distanced himself from Weinstein, acknowledging that he had been a friend for too long and defending him for too long. This incident highlighted the ethical implications of associations within professional networks, especially when facing serious allegations. Now let us end the video on a lighter note by delivering into his softer side, philanthropy. The renowned investor has left an indelible mark not only in the financial world, but also through his profound commitment to philanthropy. His journey in giving back started in 1986, after being inspired by a 60 Minutes episode featuring businessman and philanthropist Eugene Lang. Jones took a bold step, adopting a sixth-grade class in the underperforming public school of Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. His ambitious goal was to offer college scholarships to students who successfully graduated high school with the aim of achieving a 90% success rate. Unfortunately, only 33% of the students eventually graduated, leading Jones to reflect on the challenges and reevaluate his approach. The experience in Bedford Stuyvesant became a pivotal moment for Jones, shaping his subsequent philanthropic efforts. In 2009, during a commencement speech at the Buckley School, he openly shared his experiences with failure and comebacks. Despite the initial setback in getting underserved students into college, Jones highlighted that this failure ultimately paved the way for him to contribute significantly to the establishment of one of New York's most successful charter schools. In 2004, Paul founded the Excellence Charter School, the first all-boys charter school in the Bedford-Stuyvesant neighborhood of Brooklyn. This initiative aimed to provide quality education to young boys in an effort to break down barriers and create opportunities for success. 
Additionally, Jones played a key role in the Bedford Stuyvesant Vicent I Have a Dream Foundation, a foundation dedicated to supporting local students in pursuing higher education. Jones' philanthropic spirit extended to his alma mater, the University of Virginia, where he donated a substantial $44 million for the construction of a sports and concert arena, aptly named the John Paul Jones Arena, in honor of his father. This generous contribution showcased his commitment to supporting educational institutions and creating spaces for communal engagement. A significant chapter in Jones's philanthropic journey unfolded with the creation of the Contemplative Sciences Center at the University of Virginia. In April 2012, a $12 million gift from Jones and his wife Sonia made this innovative center a reality further emphasizing their dedication to advancing education and holistic well-being. Jones is not only a contributor, but also a pioneer in the philanthropic landscape. He founded the Robin Hood Foundation, a charitable organization focused on alleviating poverty-related issues in New York City. This foundation, backed by hedge fund operators, has been instrumental in addressing critical needs within the community. Furthermore, Jones established the nonprofit organization Just Capital, aiming to inform Americans about companies deemed just. Using data driven insights, Just Capital identifies and promotes companies aligned with societal priorities. The nonprofit also operates a for profit ETF, exchange traded fund, comprising companies recognized for their commitment to justice. Bottom line. To sum it up, Paul Tudor Jones is a smart money expert, a big hearted helper in education, and a person who's had some ups and downs. His story teaches us about money, kindness, and facing tough times in a way we can all understand.